So welcome to everyone that's joined us. Um, I'm sure we're going to have a couple more joining us um, in, in, a little, in a little while. Um, as you may or may not know, this was meant to be the weekend of the WSA SUP Symposium up in Halen Island, which uh, we were all really looking forward to. Um, unfortunately, that, that uh, little thing called COVID has got in the way at that one. So it's not being cancelled. Um, we've postponed it um, till next year. And everyone that's um, so far pretty much uh, book, was booked on that is joining us next year. And it'll be a great event. Um, we're really, really looking forward to Hailing Island. Um, that's your neck of the woods, I believe, isn't it, Sarah? Absolutely, half yeah. an hour away. Yeah. Yeah. So, so what I thought, what we thought we would do is we would um, kick this uh, autumn off with our autumn series, and for the next three three evenings, we're going to be running some Zoom sessions. Um, so the first one tonight, we've got three distinguished guests who can introduce themselves in a minute. Um, tomorrow, we've got Gabe Davis from uh, Patagonia. He's a surf manager for Europe. That will be uh, really interesting to. Um, hear what Gabe's got to say. And then on Sunday, we've got um, Cal Major, who's just completed a River Seven trip, um, doing a, a clean up. So that's the schedule. Um, the, the meeting tonight is uh, scheduled for about an hour. Um, what we would say is if you could mute your mics um, so that we don't hear the background noise of the kettle or the dog or the cat or the kids screaming, um, and fire away any questions that you have for our guests um, through the chat. If you're new to Zoom, it's, um, it's a button icon on your screen, you'll see chat and um, I'll try and monitor those and put the questions to the panel. And we've also got um, Ben monitoring the message facility. So we'll try our hardest to get your questions answered. So let's kick it off. Um, so welcome, um, welcome guys and girls. If Sarah, if uh, we could start with you, if you could just give us a brief um, intro as to your, your background and what you're up to now, and then we'll move on across to Dale. So over to you. Cool. Well, thanks very much for having me, Chris, and to the Water Skills Academy. Um, yep, no water, no water um, sports history at all before I started stand up paddleboarding in 2012. Uh, started racing probably 2013, pretty much straight away, I fell in love with it, you know, as you do, feet on the board. Um, raced for five years, um, culminating in winning the national championships, jointly winning with Kerry Baker. Um, then had some time off um, because I'd obviously paddled so much and so hard, so I sort of broke myself. Um, and that led me into volunteering with GB Sup National Series, um, where I sort of was suddenly thrown into the media side of it. Again, no experience, but you know, let's have a go. Um, and from that was born SUP Junkie, and we just predominantly um, help GB SUP with promoting races, uh, live feeds, interviews, but have also been very lucky enough to go off to the, um, uh, the World Championships in China with the GB SUP team, which was awesome. Um, so, and we just positively promote stand up paddleboarding. I love it, I'm slightly obsessed by it. Um, uh, and other things, uh, but just love it and want to be involved in it and just want to share the sort of the good stuff. Um, that's around at the moment. So that's me in a nutshell. And I also write for Stand Up Paddle Mag and The Paddler. Yeah. Uh, so uh, brilliant, well, brilliant to have you on board and brilliant to have you on the panel. And thanks very much um, for giving up your, your Friday night to answer some questions for us. So thank you very much for that, um, Sarah. Right, Dale, over to you. Over to me. Uh, hello, everyone. Um, so my name is Dale Mears. Um, my background is whitewater kayaking. So I came into SUP quite late in um, 2017. Um, after maybe 25 years kayaking and competing, traveling the world, paddling and living in Nottingham kind of helped because I've always been around whitewater. And from there, I picked up a camera, started doing photography, doing a lot of whitewater, rafting photography, things like that, shooting for the magazines. And then that kind of led me into start kind of reviewing kayaking gear um, and then eventually moving over to SUP and getting a passion for SUP and kind of where Sarah is a little bit, just got a massive buzz for, for anything paddleboarding. Um, I'm one of the admin um, for Sand Up Paddle UK, which is started out as an Instagram page. Um, basically, it's gradually evolving um, and we just want to showcase all the great things happening in, in, in the SUP world. We don't mind what the discipline, um, we, we just want the positives. We don't want the moaning. We don't want the miserable behind the keyboard. We just want 
what great adventures are people having show them share them with us um you know we do our best as well as um, working with you guys at wsa to try and inform the best we can to keep everyone safe yeah and also do some do some bits with the paddler and suck mag um as well <laughs> so although i've never met sarah but thanks. nice to meet you so you're um not that busy then dale as well as being a teacher as well <laughs> yeah, as well as being a secondary school teacher pretty busy but uh, are you doing a fantastic job um with, with all the stuff that you're working on, as are you, Sarah. So thank you very much, Dale. Thanks for joining us. Um, over to you, Stacey. Uh, um, yeah, I've been paddling for about nine years now. I've been introduced to paddling whilst living in Belize, um, a little bit warmer than the UK for your first lesson, um, shorts, t-shirt, flip-flops. Uh, back in the UK, I took up uh, instructing, dabbled in a bit of racing, and now I run uh, a page called Social Sup. Um, all my paddling is inviting people along to join me on trips and multi day paddle adventures. I don't charge. Um, I like people to just come join me for the experience and share the experience on the water. Brilliant, brilliant. And where, where are you based, Stacey, again? Um, so I was based in Nottingham, but never bumped into Dale whilst I lived in Nottingham. Um, and now I'm based right on the River Wye, just below Monmouth. So great for multi day trips. Right. Okay, well, thank you once again. Um, thanks for joining us again on your, fr on your Friday evening. Um, so, right, some questions. Um, what we're going to do is I'll kick off with, well, actually with you, Stacey, while I've got you, got you there. Now, um, we know that you do a lot of fundraising and you do a real good job at that. Um, have you, can you tell us a little bit about your latest fundraiser and what, what you're up to with there? And yeah, at the moment, I raise the funds for my charity, uh, Mental Health. Uh, obviously, pre-COVID, for me, it was to do with the military. My partner's just retired from the forces, and I wanted to do something with the mental health side of that and to raise funds. And now with the whole COVID thing kicking in, mental health's a massive, massive area that needs to be looked into and supported. Um, it's not quite on a paddleboard. Um, I'm walking nine times 100k hikes um, next year. It was supposed to be this year, but it's been delayed. But the challenge is to complete each of them in under 24 hours. And part of my training, I do something called Paddle and Plod, where people can join me to paddle uh, down to my house on the Y, and then we ditch the kit and walk back to get our cars, and then people just donate when they come and join me for paddles if they wish to. So a busy lady then? Uh, a little bit. <laughs> uh, and obviously aware of Jordan and his marathon fundraiser at, at the minute. Um, I actually haven't caught up with Jordan. I don't, I don't know where he, where he actually is at the minute on He's his journey. Nothing. He's where, sorry? Made it to Dublin, hasn't he, Sarah? Yes, he yeah. has. Yeah, so he's, in, he's on Ireland. So he's actually paddled yesterday twice. Um, he's had quite a lot of time off the water due to the weather. So I think yesterday was amazing. I think he did 34 kilometres. And it's his birthday today. So I don't know if you're there, Jordan, but happy birthday, mate. Keep doing what you're doing. It's great. Oh, what, what, what a challenge, really. Um, I mean, he's been faced with some pretty tricky conditions, isn't he? Um, mm. I don't actually know what his time scale is. Um, for, for uh, <laughs> well, it was three months. Uh, I think he's probably looking now more at, I don't know, seven, eight months. He's completely, being a non-paddler, which he was, uh, completely underestimated. It's not a criticism. Uh, the length of time and they've had some uh, transport issues and boating issues they've just got a new skipper today as well so they've not had a skipper for two weeks so they're you know they're slightly compromised in where he can paddle having to rely on land-based uh, support so um yeah am amazing i mean it, you know you just wish him the best he's doing it for all the right reasons as well of course yeah he's a very driven fellow we all know that and um, i i truly hope that he does it um samantha's just said he's on Eight, about 82 days at the minute so um tricky tricky conditions and not supported by with a boat for quite a bit of that i um understood at the at the start of his trip so um i didn't manage to catch up with him as he crossed through my neck of the woods which if if, if people don't know where that is that's padstow in cornwall um but i know he had a little bit of challenging times and then he headed for the irish coast for a little bit more of shelter so yeah, good. Let's um, keep following him and hopefully wish him, wish him all the best and hopefully he'll, he'll make it. I'm sure he will. Um, I'm sure he will. And if anybody doesn't know about Jordan, please follow the Great British Paddle. 
and just check out the website and just see what he's up to. Uh, he he and, definitely deserves our support. Yeah, and his chosen charity, Sarah? His Frontline Children. Um, it's his own charity actually set up and he's building a school in, oh, is it the Sudan? Um, he's been there and um, promised to build them a school. It's half built and he needs another hundred thousand pounds. And I think with this challenge, he's up to about 14 and a half thousand pounds. So he's doing pretty well, but obviously as we all know, any, every penny helps, every pound helps. Um, and he's just got to keep those, basically keep the builders on site and keep them building that school for those children who are struggling. Yeah, so, great. Yeah. Uh, total admiration for him. So, so while, I've, while I've got you on the screen there, Sarah, um, you know, lockdown is may as, affected all of us. Um, there's no denying that. Um, I, I'm quite well connected in the surf school industry and I do quite a bit of lifeguard training as part of the WSA. Um, I'm fortunate enough to travel um, to Europe and train some of the surf schools over there. Um, and having spoken to them, uh, mainly the ones in Spain and uh, Canary Islands and, and a couple in Portugal, they've had a really tough, tough uh, summer season really, whereas in Cornwall and speaking to the other surf schools that are based in the UK, um, it's been a complete opposite. We, we, we probably experienced and witnessed one of the busiest seasons that we've ever had. And having been in it for 25 years, that's obviously quite a lot of seasons to compare. But um, how, how have you seen things changed um, during lockdown for you uh, this summer? Apart from the obvious, <laughs> what I would suggest. <laughs> well, Personally, it's not impacted too much on our lives, personally, and certainly not for mine. Um, we've been able to get out and about, and it's, we've not tried to worry too much about it. It's not impacted us too much. Um, strangely, the first time I've really, it's really impacted me was yesterday. I felt really strong about it. Um, I felt absolutely fine about it if I can't paddle. Um, we've only got one van. This is all very personal, but... Um, for me, yesterday, it really sort of hit home. We've got a quite a poorly father-in-law and just not being able to have the van and not being able to just do stuff. And, and, and I think the current climate with COVID as well, these sort of sudden changes. Um, and I just, yeah, I had my lowest day probably in eight months. But, um, you know, spoke to a couple of girlfriends and, you know, you crack on and you think about people who are more worse off than you. Um, sort of work-wise, I never class what I do as work. Um, obviously, the whole of the season was shut down, so no races to, um, I nearly said compete at them, but I don't compete anymore. <laughs> no, <laughs> slip of the tongue. Um, no races to, uh, you know, um, go and watch and film and interview and live feed. So, um, but actually, again, I took that as a positive time off because last year, and the year before I was away for almost every weekend and trying to get to as many races as possible. And it's not my husband's chosen sport. So, and bless yeah. him, he's part of Sup Junkie. And um, so I took it as a positive that we could have some time off really. Um, yeah. And then for, you know, other people, I mean, Sup, as you know, has just, ex we keep using that word exploded. It has exploded, I think, because it's been so accessible. It's something that you can do on your own. Um, and it's just gone bonkers. Um, I'm involved with the Real Blue Chip Supper Club with Brian Johnson and like many other suppliers, trying to get hold of boards to supply people has been really tricky. Um, and one thing that you mentioned earlier, Dale, is, is the, you know, the safety side of it, because obviously people are buying boards from anywhere. Um, and there are dangers within that. You know, if you learn with the club or you, have a lesson you learn good practices and you learn about your leash you learn about the dangers of the ocean and you know as much as possible and you know the great thing there are so many more people stand up paddleboarding but the downside of that is that there are hidden dangers and it's really great that us three you or skills academy and many other forums are putting it out there to try and make people as safe as possible um, it's been great it's great for the sport long may they remain safe those people um and as instructors um i think we need to yes be calling them out on the beach when they've got their paddle around the wrong way and they don't have a leash on i know it's painful sometimes because sometimes they don't want to hear it but let's just keep doing our best to keep those people safe yeah so it's been a very interesting time yeah yeah absolutely um i mean my, my idea the guys that i deal with because I, I run a 
Surf School at Cornwall, and we've been teaching SUP since 2008, and this, this has been the year of SUP. There's no denying that. Um, maybe three or four years ago, we, we probably didn't see too many people paddling, and then this year, every man and his dog who used to turn up with a kayak on the roof is now turning up with a SUP. So great for the sport, um, but as you quite rightly say, you know, the, the safety education and the the um, stuff that's involved with people just jumping in the water, it, it has caused a few few issues. There's no denying that. Um, Dale, so Instagram tags uh, uh, for, for your site, have you has it gone mental? How, how has it been? Yeah, so I don't know. It, it, it's, it's a strange one because I think coming into lockdown, we were on like we were just about hit 10,000 members. Um, or followers, whatever you want to call them. We, we like to call them members, me and Darren, because it feels more of a community. And um, yeah, now we're on like just, well, 16.7 thousand. And so that's, you know, over six and a half thousand that's, that's just grown in that, what effectively is six months. And it just feels bonkers. And, you know, me and Darren are still, it's become easier actually, because every day one of us puts a post on um, just as a, like an inspiration post, but then off the back of it with either not being at work or various other things, it meant we could do a lot more. So trying to put a lot more videos on and the live questions and answers and just trying to give as much back as we can whilst doing it voluntary, I suppose. And it's, it's going to stay that way. But Yeah, you've been super busy. So it's obviously impacted you guys. So what did you say? You're up to 16,000 followers now? Uh, yeah, 16.7. So wow. gradually, gradually climbing for that sort of 20k. That'd be a, a pretty hefty milestone. I'd love to know, and I, I think I've asked you this before, Chris. I'd love to know actually the figures of how many how many paddleboarders there are in the UK. Yeah, well, I guess be interesting we, to know. Well, I guess we'd have to get all the manufacturers together and say how many boards have you sold, and then do a, some kind of median and work out some kind of figures from the previous years. Um, I personally think that paddleboarding, this is, I'm sticking my neck on the line now, will potentially outgrow surfing in the UK. I don't know. It's a big, big statement, that one. And I don't that know is a big course. statement. It is, I've seen uh, the volume of inland waterways and the access is going to be greater for flat water paddling and conditions and consistency of conditions is going to be flat water paddling in the UK. Yeah, because there's so much water inland, isn't there, and all the rivers, and, you know, with surfing, we, we need surf, and it's only those people generally that have access to the coast. I mean, people do drive, but, yeah, I'd, I'd be interesting to see, won't it? I, I, I don't actually know how many surfers there are in the UK at the minute, but um, I know down here that a lot of a lot of the surfers are now actually getting into stand-up paddleboarding, having been a little bit too cool for school shall we say before before and now they're realizing wow that i can have an adventure with this and it's actually a really good way of cross training so we're seeing a shift in that in that kind of um discipline um not so much with sup surfing though i i kind of envisaged that there would be a lot more people sup surfing in cornwall but it doesn't seem to be the growth area and i think the south coast seems to be the strong the strong area for for that um but yeah, it'd be interesting to see. So, Stacey, we've got you on the screen. Um, your SUP events that you help to organise, um, you organise, um, how has it helped the local community, the, the SUP events? Are, are you seeing a lot of uptake with paddlers? And what's the demographic, male, female? Um, for me, for a lot of the events that I do, we actually have more females attend than males. I yeah. think it's having that female support to get out and do the Marby Days. Uh, it's a confidence issue. Um, Guys tend to have a little bit more of an ego, and, and there's no issue with that. But they tend to think that they can go it alone and just crack on and do it. Whereas women are more wanting to ask questions, ask advice, and yeah. come along and have that support for their first multi day trip. And then they go on and they create their own little bubbles and groups. And it's nice to see people posting stuff back to me of their new adventures that they're off doing with other friends and introducing other people to it. And that's what I do it for is to give people the experience to have the confidence and go out and. Yeah, it's, it's a fantastic result. I mean, I, I run a, uh, or I used to run a, um, I call it a sub club evening, and it was predominantly 95% uh, ladies that would turn up. And it was really, really great to see some of them 
actually get out and then go to buying their own boards and then planning a little trip together. And some of them would um, go off to Scotland, um, joined us in Scotland, and then had the confidence to go and do those trips by themselves. So it's amazing um, to see that. Um, but like I say, we've seen a few more guys that are suddenly starting to embrace it. But that old thing called ego gets in the way. Sorry, guys, if you're those that are listening. And Dale, demographic of your audience, um, your your followers, have you broken uh, that down? Strangely, yes. Yeah. So it, Instagram tells us it's about 56% male. Yet if I look at most most like tagged images and most of the content is female based. So I think the blokes are just voyeurs, really. They're just watching and uh, the females are out on the adventures and yeah. in the nicest yeah, possible yeah. way. The guys are just uh, watching, yeah. But no, it does. It, there's, a, there's a lot of, um, there's a lot of paddleboarders that have kind of popped up, most, mostly female paddleboarders um, that have started sharing adventures and quite quickly um, you start seeing them network through Instagram and, and social media and they, you know, they pop up all over the place and you say, oh, such and such has been paddling with such and such. And it's, it's a weird, it's a weird world because I early on got talking to Chris Roach, who I know has been doing some work with you guys um, and never actually met Chris, or arranged to meet Chris um, and a couple of the other paddlers over in Wales. And just, we just never got around to it due to lockdown and various other things. Yeah. But have many, many discussions over, over Instagram and other forms of social media. And I think those little, um, we'll call them bubbles, but those little network bubbles are, are one major great thing that's happening. And I suppose that's the advantage of social media. Yeah, it's got its negatives, but to get people to, to meet up and network and be able to paddle is fantastic. And I hope that carries on, really. We've got, yeah. Yeah, you know, we've, seen a, we've seen a few pages pop up from nowhere. There's a, a sup pop page where... They've started arranging meets with um, paddlers and their dogs, um, and they they you know they got a, they had a meet of about thirty people turn up and um, all all with dogs and so on. And then there's there's um there's another one specifically for females to meet up, and it, it's just nice to see. Well, if anyone's got any tips about how to keep a springer still on the board, I'm all ears. Oh, mine. <laughs> mine's a new dog. Hi, <laughs> Sarah. Get a new dog. <laughs> Get a new dog. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think you would be too happy about that. Or use use the biggest board you can. Oh, monster sup. There you go. That could be the answer. Uh, so, Dale, you, um, how's the response been to the latest reviews that you've done then? The uh, response seems pretty good. Um, you know, social media is a funny one. Um, we, we've not kind of branched out onto YouTube yet, which seems to be a big platform. And I know, you know there's a lot of people doing, doing YouTube videos. And originally me and Darren kept it to, we wanted to keep everyone within Instagram. Um, we liked the fact that it wasn't on Facebook because Facebook, you do get a lot of comments and, you know, reading between the lines, some of it's a load of rubbish. Some of it's great advice. But you've really got to look at what you're listening to. Um, so we thought we'll keep it on Instagram. We'll keep it contained. And then gradually, when we know what we want it to look like on Facebook, we'll start to, to move into that platform. But the, the, the Q&A seem to be the most popular. You know, they've been 2,000 people viewing those, which is, which is really nice because we just want to put brands and we want to put people in front of the community so they can see who's behind these brands. Um, and we've been quite lucky. You know, we've not had everyone on yet, but um, I've spoken to Cal about getting Cal on at some point. Um, we had Lizzie on. Um, we had yourself on. Um, we need to get Sup Junkie on soon as well. Just just putting that one out there. Um, but then we've had, you know, we've had John Hibbard from Red. We had Phil Hawthorne, their, their, their designer. Um, a number of other brands that just want to come and shout out what they're doing. And I, I think that's a, a great thing. And, you know, anyone that's watching brands-wise, you know, reach out to us. We'd, we'd love to have you on. Um, it's just an opportunity for people to see what's going on. Yeah, I've, I've noticed... Um, uh, well, I watched quite a bit of the red stuff and um, found it really informative, actually, and really, really useful. Um, so if there's other brand managers listening. Um, I'm not just supporting red. <laughs> just make that clear. But, but it's a great platform to to use and to promote the product, isn't it, really? Um, so, OK, um, Sarah. Yes. The GB Sub Series. You've mentioned um, that last year was a pretty... Uh, Challenge, not challenging, that's the wrong word. Busy. Um, busy, that's what I'm Really busy. Yeah, yeah. Really you know, in, a, in a really good way, don't get me wrong, really good yeah. way. Um, this year, though, 
So you've had time off and you've had time to reflect. Um, when do you think the racing will actually kick off again? It's the, it's the crystal ball question, isn't it? Well, the crystal ball question is completely out of our hands, so I'm not even going to attempt to answer that one. Um, but we, you know, the, the, the bonus of not paddling this year was it means that we've, we've had our 2021 race series set in stone for about seven months, which is not what we normally do because we literally picked up 2020 and plopped it into 2021. Um, so that's really nice. All the paddlers who want to race know the dates. They've known the dates for many, many months. So there's no excuse um, that they're on holiday or doing something else. Um, so they can pick and choose and get those dates in their diary. And we just obviously hope, uh, I, you know, I think on uh, New Year's Day 2021, the world isn't going to go back to um, how it was. I don't think it's going to be quite that simple. We all know that. But um, obviously we hope that maybe by, I don't know, springtime, maybe by the first race, which is beginning of May. Yeah, which is, if, if you could just fill us in, which, which is the first race? Uh? So the first race will be in Cardiff. Um, at the White Water Centre. So yeah. one of our favourites. I mean, they're all they're all pretty much favourites, but it's it's really lovely. Ben down there just you know looks after us all, and um, it's a great venue as well. They paddle up to um, what used to be called the Millennium Stadium and then back again. So that's yeah. at the beginning of May. So I'd like to think that we would be back to racing. Um, there has been one race this year, um, and that was the X Hammer. Yeah, um, I didn't go, but it was run really well apparently and very safely and fair play to them for you know for making it happen um so i'd like to think in may that we would start our series and then we've got we run through got six races and then one set of sprints run through to september um and let's keep our fingers crossed that it actually happens because they there are so many people out there who are just desperately missing the national series you know they love racing and they want to be but part of that is the community. What they're missing is not so much the racing. Yeah. They're missing their buddies. They're missing their racing buddies. So um, let's hope we can get them back. So it's a, it's a series of six then, is it? Did you say? Yeah, there's three, um, three flat water and three ocean series. Now, we realised a couple of years ago that um, we do a survey, survey every year and we ask the people, the paddlers, what they want. And a lot of them want ocean races. Um, you know, as Stacey said, a lot of the paddlers paddle inland. You know, I was a river girl, paddling on lakes and rivers, never on the ocean. But there, there is quite a lot of people who like to race on the ocean. So we thought, okay, let's give them what they want. So there are three flat water and they are, uh, you have to race two out of three to get a score. And then you will be crowned national champion of the uh, flat water series. You then have the ocean series, which is yeah. later on in the year. Three again, two out of three counts. Um, and then the other exciting, sorry. Sorry, which are the venues for the uh, ocean racing? So the, so the flat water is Cardiff in May, beginning of May. We've got Central Sup, so we're back to them, uh, Tamworth at the end of May. And then uh, my hometown favorite, Battle of the Thames, uh, which should have been the 10th anniversary edition this year, which it still will be in 2020. And that is middle of June. And then we've got Base Up, so that's always a massive favourite because that's just such a great venue and uh, the guys down there are awesome. That is in, do you know, I don't know when that is, but it's going to be around about June. We've then got the Celtic Cup, which is St Ives, which is just awesome. And then we've got a new one uh, right up in Northumberland. Again, the people, the people ask for a race up north. Um, so we've given it to them. Um, so, yeah. Uh, and then the, the sprints, uh, which are, uh, it's a British canoeing collaboration. Yeah. It wouldn't have happened this year because we're a little bit late to the party. Um, but we go up to Nottingham to the War Sports Centre. Stacey will know it very, very well. Um, and join in with the, with the sprint championships. Um, so all the canoes, the kayakers, the... Yeah, yeah. and, and the get ups in there and got the little uh, yellow buckets. And that, that's happened once. And... People just loved it. So uh, we're bringing that back for 2021. So that's really well, exciting. Well, we really look forward to hopefully some of the, well, not all of the race, races taking, taking part. Um, Stacey, you, you, thank you for that, Sarah. Um, and well, just, just as a matter of interest, how, how does our audience find out the race schedule again? 
Yeah, there, um, if you look on the GBSUP website, just Google GBSUP um, and it's on the front page. And we've obviously got a Facebook, uh, Facebook page, GBSUP National Series and the group page. Uh, Instagram as well, GBSUP. <laughs> so yeah. yeah, just Google GBSUP, you'll find us out there. And the race schedule is actually on the, on the you know, is on the top of the uh, Facebook page and on the front page of the website. So it's absolutely crystal clear. Yeah, fantastic. Thank you for that. Um, so Stacey and Dale, like Nottingham, Nottingham area, at the, the Whitewater Centre there, have, have, you, have you paddled on that? Uh, yeah, um, I used to manage the site. Um, right. Part of introducing Barry Hughes uh, access to subs on a white water course there, um, and Dale would have paddled it many a times in a boat. Oh yeah, yeah. You and a sub as well. There you go. In so fact, I, I think I think potentially me and Barry were two of the first people down on a sub one year randomly when when we first saw a sub. We got grabbed one from the shop and um, shot down there during like the national student rodeo or something years ago. <laughs> so how challenging is it then? To, to, um, to paddle that white water on the centre. I tried at Cardiff um, just at, just at the end of, of the outflow, and that's not my discipline. I must admit. <laughs> I mean, it's not, it's not too bad because they've got the different sections of the course. So most people start off down in the back channels and yeah. get to the basic skills, and then they can move into the different sections. But I think there's only possibly two, maybe three people that have run the course stood up and got to take a swim, and that'll be Barry himself. Anthony Ng and uh, possibly one or two others that have, have, have attempted it and maybe achieved it. Yeah, so do you see a growth in that area then? It's getting popular. Um, there's now groups uh, popping up around the country for smaller uh, communities uh, for different rivers now meeting up and meeting regularly. Now where I am in uh, the Wide Valley, Simmons Yacht has got a group that meet weekly when possible when the river levels are okay. Um, and yeah, it's definitely a growing discipline. Yeah, mm -hmm. so, sorry, Dale, you were going to say something? Yeah, just to follow on from what Stacey said, like the, the, the group at Nottingham, uh, which is Nottingham White Water, is massive. And uh, there's a big community down there that, that jump on on a Monday evening and, and paddle. And what, what those guys can do is phenomenal. I mean, coming from a kayaking background, it's quite nice because I understand the water. So yeah. I've been down a few times, but. I could never go from top to bottom. I'll fall in all the time. But uh, it's, it's strangely intimidating. You know, you, in a kayak, when you, you lower down, there's, there's no risk and you, you don't, really, don't really mind. As soon as you stood up on a sub, you feel really high and unstable. And um, it's funny, I, I did one of the events, actually, and um, Anthony was, was running the event. And there was a good number of paddlers from all different disciplines. And you've got the, the surf paddlers that didn't understand the water, but got amazing balance. Yeah. You've, got, you've got people that are clearly used to racing that are really, really super fit, but they didn't have the balance or couldn't understand the water. Um, and then you've got people that could read the water, but didn't have the balance. So it was a bit, it was a bit of a jack of all trades kind of race, but it was good fun, really good fun. Yeah, so a good, a good mix and obviously specialist kit is needed for that. Um, and... We won't go into that topic of leashes and stuff right now tonight because that's a whole different debate. But could go a um, bit deep. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'd, I'd, I'd like to have a go, a proper go, but um, I'm, I maybe be maybe have the balance, but not much knowledge of the white water. So I'd be one. I'd be part of that group. That's for sure. Um, Sarah, you, I notice quite a lot. Of, I see what you're up to through the social media channels, and um, you're sitting down quite a bit at the minute, aren't you? I am, yeah. I have, yeah. I have actually tried white water, and I'm going on a white water uh, with blue chip. We're going in November, hopefully. Um, yeah. but, uh, I'm just trying to think where we're going. We're going to the river, oh, somewhere on Exmoor. What would that be? The River X? Dart. Dart, possibly. Oh, no. well, maybe. Uh, anyway, uh, we're going. Um, I've been once before with them. I think I was the, the only girl with 13 blokes, but they looked after me, and I was really scared, but I absolutely loved it it was before i tried sup surfing and it was like the best thing it was just so much fun um yeah so i love that but no oc is my new love um tried it about a year and a oh, may may last year um again a bit like the paddle boarding you know you sit your bum in it and have a go and uh just loved it uh my lower back was a bit of an issue at that time it has been a bit of an issue with stand up paddle boarding and um the OC just 
has made that all better because you have a rudder so you don't have that constant you know when you've got a side wind and you're you know twisting your body aren't you and powering to to stay straight and you don't have that in in an oc because you've got a rudder so you just sit yeah. there and use your feet um, but it is an absolute joy and I love it. And it's clearly from watching other people. Um, it's a it's great cross training for stand up paddleboarding. Um, if anybody wants to come and have a go on my OC, it's lovely. And it just comes alive in the ocean. It's, it's taught me to be much safer. I am much more safety conscious on the OC because it's not like a suck. If I, if I lose my paddle, I can't prone on a, an OC. If no. it breaks up, I can't, you know, I, I'm in trouble. So I have, I have all the safety kit and more um, when I go out on my OC, um, spare paddle and everything, but it and, just comes alive in the ocean. And you uh, taught, me, uh, taught me a lot more about being on, on the sea because you're so much closer to it and you can watch the ocean and just catching the waves down at Hailing is just the faster, the better. It's just very exciting. So yeah, I love it. And I, that's clearly evident <laughs> and it's brilliant to see. <laughs> And um, talking about the hailing, um, I believe you had some instruction from the guru, Mr. West. I did. Now, I, I've never, I'd never met Steve, actually. I, I photographed him strangely because I love photography, um, Dale, as well. And that's sort of why I started doing um, helping out with GB stuff. It's actually taking photographs as well. And I took a photograph of this man. And, and I think Brian said, oh, that's Steve West. You know, like I should know who he was. I think this was back in 2012. I'd not been on a paddleboard for long. Um, and then I realized who he was. And actually, it was watching your um, chats with him, um, the WSA um, webinars with Steve. And I'd always had it in my mind, uh, you know, once I got the OC, that he was the man to go and see. Um, there's some other amazing paddlers, but they've actually all been taught by Steve. Um, so and I knew he was around. I knew he was around hailing. And I just, yeah, after watching him one day, I just thought I need to go and go and see him. And he's just, oh, he's just the most incredible man, very generous with his time, so much knowledge. Um, it just we just paddled out together and it was just it was just a great experience so i will be going back for another session i haven't actually been out enough to practice um you know too much since my lesson with him but uh, yeah. yeah he's he's incredibly knowledgeable as you know um yeah. you know you could talk for four hours about a paddle i think <laughs> <laughs> you know so he's got some great great knowledge and incredible experience so uh, yeah, he's he's half an hour away, so I should be back with him, yeah. Yeah, and I think Steve's quite willing to put on some clinics for any of our audience that may want to have a go at this. Um, Stacey, have, have, have you um, tried OC yet? No, um, the only sit-down canoe I've done is Canadian canoe, and that was my introduction to paddling, and it was uh, 170 miles in uh, Belize, um, and I, after I did that, I had to be sitting down. <laughs> <laughs> and, and Dale, have, have, have you branched into, well, obviously you come from sitting on your bum background, from what you say, um, now you, you've discovered standing on your feet, the real deal, but are you going to have a go at sitting back down on your bum again, or the OC? Well, still, well, I, I say I still do a bit of kayaking, I don't do any kayaking, that's a lie if I was to say <laughs> that, but uh, yeah, after, you know, 25 years sat on my backside, I, I like standing up now. Um, <laughs> Oh, you're frozen. back. It's not good for your legs. It's not good for your feet. It's not, it's not really good for anything, to be honest. Um, I did try a bit of uh, OC1, which freestyle kayaking, which is where you kneel in a small kayak. And uh, that was an experience. You just end up flapping around and it's just a different game. Uh, the sea sounds good, though. The ocean sounds amazing. I'll do anything that's in, in, in water. So I'd give everything a go. Well, I'm going to have a play. I, I, I'm, I know that Ryan is big into it as his peak holiday, so two of our really well established races have um, yeah. taken OC1 quite seriously now. And I, I, don't, I don't actually know if there's any, I'm sure there are clubs that are starting up, and yeah. I it will be one of the areas that will see growth because it's happened. You know, I mean, Polynesia and places like that, they're born with a paddle in their hand and off they go. Mm -hmm. But uh, some of these other, other areas where stand-up paddleboarding is probably a little bit further down the line than us, people are, seem to be jumping next into OC1 and uh, hopefully... I think because it has proven to be such good cross-training, 
and uh, we actually went and had a, a sort of safety lesson with uh, Pete Holiday. Two yeah. hours of, uh, you know, full on on land safety. Um, scared me a bit actually, but it was good because it, it was all relevant um, and, and very necessary. And they are part of the Bournemouth Outrigger Canoe Club. And they're great because they've got access to lots of uh, OCs, OC1, 2, possibly 4s, I'm not sure, 6s. Um, so again, that's great, you know, going in OC6. I haven't done it myself yet, but I want to because it's all about teamwork. And, it, and you've got to work together as a team. Uh, there's a Royal Outrigger Canoe Club on the Thames um, up towards uh, Kingston, past Kingston Way. So they are around. I know that the um, Whitewater Centre in uh, uh, Cardiff has taken taken some OCs, uh, been, been delivered by um, Wu, who are the company that make, have made my OCs. So they have now got OCs as well. So they are popping up and yeah, go and have a go. Just It's just the best fun. It's, um, yeah, go and have a go, see what you think. So, so we, I think we, we all agree that there's going to be growth in that, that, that area. Um, Stacey, you, you know, I mean, you do a lot of multi-day journeys. Um, so where, where, where do you see the growth? Um, do you see growth in people doing journeys like you're doing? Um, yeah, I think if we end up uh, with another summer of staycation, um, whatever people want to call it, I think multi-day trips are going to become quite a big thing. In the UK, we've got so many nice stretches of river and inland waterways. I mean, I've just come back from my trip up in the Lake District. Yeah. And we days and tackled all 12 lakes whilst we were there. And you can either stop on one lake for a whole week, you know, and enjoy that one day and explore all the little crevices or get in your car, move around to Scotland. You know, there's so many places up in Scotland to go and explore. I, I think people will start to uh, spread their wings within their own country and enjoy multi-day back-to-back adventures. Yeah, um, we've, we've seen this adventuring side of things develop down here. Um, obviously, you know, paddling in the ocean, as you've mentioned there, Sarah, is, is a little bit of a different ball game to paddling on a on a, an enclosed sheltered area um, and once you get those special days where it's flat and the weather's really nice it, it is just it's just so good for the soul isn't it I mean I'm going to be a little bit hippie but it, it is when we went and that whole experience of paddling in different areas and exploring different areas and actually meeting other people that are wanting to do the same thing it's a Definitely. I think um, I think the ocean and it's not it's not hippy dippy stuff. It's um, it's scientifically proven. Yeah, yeah. You know, blue therapy is so good for our soul. And even if I'm feeling a little bit poorly, I'll just drive to the ocean, whether I'm on a board or not. And I will sit there and soak it all up. And it is so good for the soul. So I think that is very relevant. But yeah, I want to get more into adventure paddling as well. I've, you know, I've been in contact with Stacey and um, just want to get my adventure on and get out there and do some you know watching cal major's film and just watching her paddle the river seven it looked absolutely stunning and i i was lucky enough to paddle with jordan on the south coast and we paddled for oh, i think it was about 32 miles or something just paddling not racing not training and it was the first time i'd ever really done that yeah um, you know, I've done it on the OC a little bit but not on a stand up paddleboard and we had amazing conditions and it just made me think this is what I want to do more of. I want to do more adventure paddling. Um, and I think Stacey's right. I think people will, will do that. You know, if we, if we have to stay at home and we, we've got access to some amazing uh, spots, you know, around the countryside, you know, let's, let's find them and use them and have fun in them. Yeah, abs ab absolutely. Um, we, well, I think like, like you say, uh, our, um, our, our access, to, to some of the most beautiful spots to paddle. Uh, uh, it's just, we just got to share it and get it out there and make sure people are doing it, doing it safely, really. Um, with so much advice and chats out there on social media, I'll put this to the group. Um, where, do you, where, do, where do you guys and girls source your information and when, when it comes to keeping up on the latest trends and, and kit? And do you, do you, are you Facebook? Are you, you're not Facebook warriors, but is there any specific groups that you that you tend to look towards? Um, well, I oh gosh, that's a tricky one actually. I I look things just pop up 
obviously if I, you know, I, I don't need to know anything about, well, racing and everything. I'll, I'll look at all the, the big names, you know, I'll look at uh, Stand Up Paddle Mag, Sup Border, um, I've got their Pro Edition, which is brilliant. I've got access to all sorts of stuff, you know, sup surfing techniques. Yeah. Um, oh, just amazing stuff. Um, you guys for safety and stuff. And I got something from um, Dale. I needed something for GB Sup to post about uh, um, safety, you know, starting with the leashes. And you guys have produced a really good um, video about leashes. Um, and we're not going to go there tonight, but you know, that's that's where I got that from because it wasn't um, it wasn't produced by a store that was trying to sell them. It was produced by you guys who are independent. Um, so I I do try and look at the independent uh, independence as in not trying to sell you something um, vibe um, and get the information from them. Um, I think for most things, yeah. It, it can be quite challenging, can it, to, to decipher what's actually correct, what, what's good advice, what's bad advice. For, for people who are new to the industry, there, there is a lot of stuff out there, isn't there? And um, unfortunately, some of it is maybe a little bit dated or things have moved on or maybe the wrong advice. Um, but there's also a lot of really good stuff out there. Um, Dale, who would you turn to then? You know, I, apo I apologise. <laughs> Dropping out there. Sorry about that. So I've, I've missed a whole period of, of information. Um, I suppose I suppose me and Darren not coming from a sub background outright means we question everything we read. We don't just agree with it. Um, I've got a lot of knowledge from from the kayaking world and a lot of great coaches and I've got great people that have advised me around safety for years. Um, so a lot of that has, has crossed over into into the sub world and a lot of it is common sense to kayakers you know having done whitewater safety and rescue courses and things like that coming into sup and seeing some things it just makes me question some of our, some of the practices um so i guess some of my, some of that comes from past experience through the kayaking world um but also myself and darren and darren will admit you know we're not we're not experts we don't we don't claim we are um we read a lot and, yeah. and i mean a lot we'll read blog posts, we'll watch YouTube videos. Um, I spend a lot of time speaking to yourself, Chris uh, and Ben. Um, I speak to a lot of brands as well. A lot of the time I'll bypass, I'm not in most of the Facebook groups, I'll be honest. Um, I find myself just getting very frustrated by a number of them. Um, so I'll just go straight to brands and I'll say, what do you think? Um, or we'll drop them questions and and I suppose that's where this kind of collaboration things come from. We, we speak to a lot of brands now and we talk to them about safety. We talk to them about their packages and what they're offering. Um, I guess it's just listening, listening and, and making, making your own mind up and not, not listening to, you know, dated YouTube videos or dated forum posts or things like that, because I think such changing and it's changed a lot. Yeah, that, that's, that is absolutely um, for sure it's changed a lot and I think it's all about sharing the information isn't it when when and collaboration you said and I think when when somebody f has something which is really educational hey let's let's share it and educate everybody else and get it out there really let's not just keep these little things to ourselves let's spread the love shall we say yeah I I'm think saying, but, oh, sorry sorry Sarah I was gonna say I think as well being a little bit more as we three are now in the public eye and people do look up to you a little bit for um i don't know knowledge or whatever but you it really makes you look at everything so much more carefully because anything that i share or dale or stacy you know people people look to us for you know because we're yeah. doing some great things out there you know um and dale with your 16 and a half thousand followers you know you've got to get it right haven't you and you can't just post anything you've really got to look at it and 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 really feel that it is right to post and i, I guess some of the things that i think some of the things me and me and me and darren speak a lot and um although i've only met darren a couple of times and we've been running this page since like about 20 2018 when darren joined the page um we do talk a hell of a lot on a, on a daily basis and we ponder ideas if we write something it, we send it to each other for check-in um you know darren does a hell of a lot of research and and like i said before about 
not having these preconceptions about what what it should be like um we'll, we'll never we'll never turn around and say yeah you know we, we know 100 percent that we're right what we'll try and offer is we'll try and offer ad not advice I, I hate the word of advice we try and offer education and if we can put something out there that talks about the issues let people make their own mind up i think our most pop one of the most popular and i don't like to call it a review because it's not videos that i've put on igtv was me in the river trent jumping in and with an inflatable um, PFD and a fixed PFD, you know, vest style. And it wasn't about a review. It was just to say, look, these are the two types. This is what happens. Make your own mind up, do your research, but this is what happens. And that's something that we're quite passionate about continuing. Um, I've got a video coming out this weekend about uh, use of dry suits. And it's not about, look, here's a dry suit, go and buy it, but here's an alternative to wearing a wetsuit or here's an alternative um, to, to something else. And it's just offering that advice, really. Or, use the word advice again, offering the options. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, uh, it's a tricky one, isn't it? But you're doing a good job. You're doing a great job. So keep, keep it up. And Stacey, question, um, question for you. Who do you look to for inspiration for planning that next magical journey or adventure uh, I generally um, I follow quite a lot of people that not only do sub adventures but wild camping multi-day hikes bike bike packing and look for new places to go and explore and just draw on their experiences ask them questions ask them for advice um, it's not always about the sub it's about the surroundings that you're going to be in yeah uh, and the land and area that you're going to access and whether you've got rights to access it um, and, and how you want to behave and the size of the group that you're going to take as well to the area that you go into it. Yeah, very good points. Um, we, we did a we did an actual webinar presentation on planning and um, planning your trips and there's a lot that's a lot that goes into it, isn't there? That maybe yeah. if we're new to that sport and we're thinking, well, we, we we can stand on this sup thing now and we can make ourselves go along a little bit, but I want to go on an adventure. It, it's not quite that simple, is it? There's, bit of planning that's involved and for those of you that are listening and you, you want to gem up on that it's uh, it's on our YouTube stuff um, so uh, you know that's an hour gone already guys so and girls I just want to say um, thank you very much um, before we before I go though Dale favorite piece of kit and that is sup related favorite piece of kit yeah go on what off the top of your head bang um for oh, it's 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 gonna be i'm gonna go i'm gonna go with safety i'm gonna go with a a, a good quality um buoyancy aid pfd brilliant so put you on the spot there so stacy and sarah you've got a little bit you've had a little bit more time to think about this sarah favorite, favorite piece of kit oh it's got to be quick release uh waist you know quick release belt you know we're wearing them all the time now we're teaching all you know all our teaching now they all wear one um, we're not just talking about them, we're actually making them wear one and they are very relevant in today's paddleboarding. Yeah, absolutely. And practicing using them as well. Uh, yeah. Stacey, favourite piece of kit? Uh, for me, it's going to be, I'm on board, I won't go on about the crown for the fact that it's an eye sock. Uh, it makes multi-day adventures so much easier yeah. um, and uh, it enables you to get out and explore places that you wouldn't think you could get to. Yeah, brilliant. So... That, I'm going to wrap that up now then, guys. So thank you ever so much for giving up your time on a, on a Friday night. It's um, been really fascinating talking to you. Um, I'm sure we're all crossing paths pretty soon. Well, two of us will be cross, three of us are crossing paths pretty soon. Dale, um, I'm sure we will at some point. Maybe I will get up to that Nottingham Whitewater Centre. I don't know. Welcome yeah, okay, anytime. Yeah, show me how it's done. No Do doubt. it, Chris. Do it. You'll love it. <laughs> I quite like a challenge, uh, but I, I can tell you now I would find that very challenging, but I don't mind making a, not a fool of myself, I like having a little challenge and trying new things. So thanks, thanks so much. Um, and just for the audience, um, those of you that may have a little bit of spare time tomorrow, we've got uh, a interest, I have already mentioned this, but a fascinating talk from Patagonia, the Gabe Davis, big wave surfer. It's not all about surfing. It's just about the environmental um, project that they've been working on, their ethics, their philosophy. Um, so tune in for that. If you if you 
not, not doing anything else on a Saturday night at eight o'clock. Um, and then Sunday's Cal Majors event. So uh, whereas Cal will be talking to us about um, her recent trip on the River Seven. So thanks ever so much. And, and I'll wish you all a, a good evening and uh, hopefully see you, see you soon. Thank you very much. Take care. Thank thanks for having me. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you, Tracy, Gail. Okay. Bye. Bye. Thanks, Chris. Yeah, thanks for, thanks for coming.